Okay. Um, all right, let's get into uh, the tech. Can you briefly describe how UltraView's autonomous drones operate and what specific inspections are being carried out? I see uh, your drone right here. It looks, it looks fantastic. Uh, is this like a B design, like a, a, so it's, um, with the eye in front of it? So it's um it's a like a dragonfly. Uh, um, okay. Essentially, like our designers, we put it together. We went through a bunch of different concepts. So the, the system is is modular, so we can change out that front um, okay. gimbal and put anything else that we need on in the front of it. You know, it's and, and thanks for the design. We actually we actually won two design awards: the Red Dot Award and the IF Award. Um, nice. Back in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, I believe. Um, but going back to the the question. Right, and, and if I'm remembering correctly, the question was, I don't know, how do the drone operate? Yeah, how, right? how, how do What's the autonomous drones it? operate? Yeah, and uh, what inspections are you carrying out with them? Yeah, so the, so the drone, I, I was pretty adamant about using a 3D LiDAR system. So this drone is equipped with a 3D LiDAR system, um, and that provides it like a 360 view of the entire world. Have you ever seen those self-driving cars? Like, mm -hmm. we see a lot of the cruises right now. They're all using, you know, this system and some other AI magic too to to make those things fly. I mean, to drive. So, I figured this is the best way to have a system that's operating in um, active environments, that being the hangar, uh, to make sure it's navigating effectively and not hitting anything or coming mm -hmm. close. So, um, how the drone operates. So at a really high level is that we have it has a, a map of whatever aircraft it is that we've we're going to inspect mm -hmm. typically we've already gone out we've flown around this aircraft at one of our partner or customer facilities we've gathered this data we've created the map or a model what's called a digital twin of that plane and then the drone uses the lidar when, when we put it next to an aircraft and we tell it what kind of aircraft it is it already has that map so we put it next to a plane it launches it's just doing a comparison like is what I'm seeing in the real world with the LiDAR the same as what I have been pre-programmed to understand about the world and then creating waypoints around that aircraft. So it's, it's just, uh, it's fully autonomous. It's just making sure that it doesn't hit anything. It can navigate around things. So um, in terms of the, the maintenance side and the, the, mm -hmm. for its particular application, so it's, it's, it would be used uh, we'd say in in the aviation industry, especially around maintenance, there are four types of checks. There's your A through your D checks. D okay. being like your longest checks, right? Those are like mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. And those are like they take the entire plane apart, bring everything, and they inspect and make sure there's no like wear or corrosion or anything. So that's a that's one great application um, check that's happening. We can also look at more like C checks. So these inspections or checks are happening inside of the hangar specifically, mm -hmm. which we're working to make sure that we can fly out, you know, outdoors. I mean, Boeing and Delta and, and United are working on that program right now with the FAA, uh, which is great because that's when we really hit that sweet spot of being able to use, really deploy these systems and, and get them out there. But mm -hmm. yeah, so these inspections, so they're, they're varying amount of hours, essentially what happens, flight hours that the aircraft go through and that determines, hey, is it getting inspected overnight or is it going down for, you know, a month or two at a time for this inspection. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, okay, so actually this reminds me of, uh, I was actually on this podcast a few weeks ago, I was talking about the Tesla uh, robots and mm -hmm. how they could map the entire, and this is not specific to Tesla, but they could map out the entire environment that they, they, they view, right? Basically, mm -hmm. so whenever I see eyes like this, I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like you said, they can compare what they're looking at versus what should be there. And they can tell differences. They can tell all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So and we, we're going to talk about uh, the uses of these drones as in beyond aircraft inspection later on, but it, it, I'm, I'm noticing that this could be very, very... Uh, There's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it could be very... Uh, it could have very wide-ranging applications. You say you won two design awards, 2021-2022. Uh, uh, you can expand on that a little bit. And what is the inspiration for the Dragonfly design? Like, what is the real inspiration? Yeah, um, so... The red, so I'll start with the Red Dot Award and kind of what that is yeah. and, and then get into the, but 
that, that inspiration. But the Red Dead Award is like this really, really prestigious German design award. Like it is mm-hmm. like kind of the, the top of the top of awards that can be given to like hardware products. So things like like Apple and Toyota and when they, when they create these beautiful products, they mm-hmm. always apply for that. And it's, it's I mean, it's huge. There's a big book that you get. It's awesome. Um, and a lot of like global recognition for it. Um, the IF Award is, you know, kind of similar along that that vein as well. So they're really, you know, together with our industrial designers, the name, the name is Hatch Duo. Um, um, John Tai is the, the the CEO over there. He's a really, really good friend of mine out in San, uh, San Jose. Hatch Duo? Hatch Duo, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely recommend if you guys are doing anything with hardware, I would definitely recommend giving We are. Work. We are all about hardware here. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fantastic and they okay. know how to work with startups. Okay. And they're really accomplished. So, yeah, so as we're going through this design process, I was I gave a lot of cues of things that I really enjoyed mm-hmm. and, and product design, like things are my favorite products, what do these look like, um, and then also things that inspire me from the world, and they kind of brought in some more real-world aspects, mm-hmm. but I love cars. So, like, if you look at the back of the drone, it has, like, lights like it's like race cars do on the back of it. So mm-hmm. they, they implemented that design into the product as well, and then they were pulling items from, you know, nature, and how they fly and how they look. So, you know, as they're doing this, we got like a brand book and had like a okay. firefly, I mean, a yeah, dragonfly, and then our drone kind of as a model is like that. Yeah. Let's iterate on that. That looks really great. Yeah. You know, if some people will say physics is the foundation for engineering in general, I say it's biology, it's nature. Like, yeah, physics too, but it's some of the best designs that you can come up with or some of the best functionalities you can get out of. Uh, hardware technologies come from just mimicking nature, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nature's yeah. put together and built everything first. So. It already exists in nature, just copy it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so y- you were talking earlier on about Boeing, Delta, companies like that, uh, trying to get FAA approval for inspections outdoors. Um, who are the biggest co- customers in this space, Right. And how frequently uh, do they need these type of inspections to be done? The type of inspections that you do with your drone? Yeah. Um, so pulling back on the initial time, the, the amount of checks that happen, you know, that's really the time frame, right? Mm-hmm. So like your yeah. couple hundred flight hours to every 10 years, something like that. So um, the biggest customers, there, are, there, there, there there's several. So the people that you know, are in the space that would utilize our you know, this product are, they're called, it's called MROs. So maintenance, repair, and overhaul facilities. Those are where aircraft go um, to be repaired. Mm-hmm. Either they could be, you know, either, you know, United, Delta, and, you know, American can own, have their own hubs, or there's third party ones that, you know, like FEM and um, Lufthansa Technic or that are that are out there that you, they can send planes to. The Some of the customers that we work with that are pretty, pretty big would mm-hmm. be like the U.S. Air Force. For example, you know they have they have large fleets of aircraft that need to be maintained. Pretty, I mean, always. You know, these things have to be mission capable at mm-hmm. any given moment. So, you know, we are initially for us as we're having more conversations with the Air Force, they're looking at they're using our product for um, inspections of the B1 um, platform or the C130, um, you know, carrier aircraft. So, I mean, we also have you know your again your technical operations from so like in an a, you know, a Delta Tech Ops, again, the two Lufthansa, uh, Feem, um, MRO Holdings. There's a, there's a, there's a, actually, believe it or not, there's a lot of companies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Simply because. Uh, we got to fly. Yeah, we got to fly and uh, you don't want anything to go wrong in the air. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs>